Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Josh Shigoda and today I'm going to discuss muscle spasms and what you should do when you get one or if you even get one. So first things first, we have to understand what a muscle spasm is and that's pretty much a contraction of that muscle um, and it's going into this protective state, right? So if you think about a muscle, the, the really the primary reason that you have muscles is to move your body. After that, when you injure a joint, what do they do? They go into this protective mode. And so really a spasm is a way of the body protecting itself and protecting other sensitive structures that are within the body, right? So this can happen from you know a muscle pull or a muscle tear. This can occur from a trauma to the body. This can occur from just like, a, I'm gonna just give an example, like a rib head popping out. This can have happen in the calf from overexertion from exercise, from a lack of nutrients and uh, electrolytes and minerals and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of things. You could pinch a nerve, but either way, the number one reason why our body goes into a spasm is to get the, the muscle to fire to protect that area, right? So first, once we have a muscle spasm, we have to identify why, right? So. For some people, it will be really obvious. Some people, it will not be obvious, right? Um, if you know you just went out for a really long run and then at the end you did a lot of sprints and you've been sweating, maybe you didn't drink water beforehand or um, maybe you didn't drink any of those goos or something like that and you're running up the hill and you cramp, your calf cramped and went to a spasm, well, you could probably associate that with a lack of nutrients as well as overexertion, right? But the spasm that I'm really talking about uh, is very good in general, but this spasm that I'm gonna be discussing specifically right now, it's really like after you injure something. So, or uh, if you go down to pick up something and your back kind of goes out on you, or you feel like some sort of spasm, and sometimes you'll feel what we call fasciculations, and that's like where it's like actually like tremoring. And that could be an indication uh, of these spasms. In addition, sometimes you just feel like the, the muscle just doesn't want to be moved at all. So the number one mistake people do is they go ahead and stretch that muscle. Now, most people would actually think that stretching a muscle is good. It is good. But when you have this overly protective muscle that's hunkered down like an anchor in the ocean, it's not necessarily going to move the easiest. So when you go ahead and start stretching it, it's just going on to elongate and then it's going to spasm up and recoil even more sometimes. So sometimes the biggest mistake you can do is do what you think is best for it, which is stretch, but that's actually the exact opposite. So then what do you do, right? There's a lot of things that you can do. I always recommend good nutrients and nutrition, but let's talk about movement and mobility today. Uh, we'll talk about heat heat compresses. Now, a heat compress is really good for muscles, right? Heat and muscles go together. Uh, they really loosen up very well when you're talking about heat, so I highly recommend if you're going through a spasm that you apply anywhere between five and ten minutes of warm compress to that area. This is really good for strains and stuff like that, again, muscle spasms, to help alleviate the tension and the tightness and some of the discomfort that can be associated with that spasm. Two, uh, very gentle, subtle movement. So let's pretend it's in my mid back and I'm like hurting and, and like I'm in this position because this is, feels like better. But what I want to do is a lot of people will want to stretch even further. That's the wrong thing, like I said, right? But what you want to do is start to get some gentle movement into the spine, rotate very gently, not all the way through. A lot of people like to go to that like, oh, I really feel it, I really feel it. No, do not go there. Guys, you're gonna just stretch that muscle and that part faster further and it's just going to end up being a mess and it's going to take you longer to recover. Less is truly more when you're talking about a muscle spasm. So you want to get gentle movement, uh, heat compress and then gentle movement. And what you may also want to try is the exact opposite motion that I said before, right? So before we said stretching forward for a back spasm, which is where a lot of our uh, a lot of patients would like to go, they like to stretch forward, try the exact opposite. Try to just very gently extend back and start contracting that muscle. It may sound very counterintuitive, but there is neurologic responses that allow the muscle to contract and then after it contracts, it wants to relax. Now, if you have a muscle that's constantly contracted, if you contract a little bit more, sometimes it will give that, that ease and that relaxation period. So 
those are three things you can do. Finally, if you are going to be working on that muscle, if you have like the ability to reach it, light stroke and light touch is better than deep, heavy pressure. So a lot of people like to go in like, oh, there's a, there's a knot, and they, they go really, really hard into that muscle spasm or into that, into that muscle belly. Guys, you are going to be in discomfort and pain, and that's going to trigger a sympathetic response, which is not gonna allow you to re relax and recover properly. Do very light stroking. You want to caress and corral that nervous system. You want to have the body and that nervous system say, okay, it's relaxation time. Not this intense spasmodic uh, contraction. Not this intense deep tissue work. That is going to just create more of a uh, unhealing environment. Not a good environment for it to heal in. So those are another things you can do. So if you end up going into that muscle as well and you wanna work on it, I always recommend working above that joint and below that joint. So if this is the muscle spasm right here, I recommend working a little bit below and then working a little bit below and above and not necessarily pushing directly on there. You could push around it, but not directly onto it is what I would recommend. And finally, the things is if you do have foam rollers or things like that, like I said, work below the joint and then above the joint first. But I also like to recommend uh, percussive devices such as the Hypervolt or something like that. And I like to use them on the very lightest setting and not go very hard. So again, it's a neurostimulation thing that we're talking about and it's really getting the body to just relax. Less truly is more when you're having when you're having this type of muscle spasm um, from an injury or from a strained muscle, not necessarily from a I guess you could say nutrient deficit. But if you are having a muscle spasm, guys, whether it is from the nutrient deficit, make sure you get the nutrients in there and you rest. And again, even for that one, I still would recommend that you don't overly stretch. It's very counterintuitive, but that's the number one mistake I see people do, and it doesn't allow their body to completely relax. Less is really more in this type of case. So guys, with time, I guarantee that it will alleviate a lot more, but if you stretch too much and you do too much, you're gonna just uh, kind of irritate it further and it's not going to give that time to relax. So that is how I would treat or self-treat a muscle spasm that you're having in your body. Uh, keep that in mind, so hopefully this helps you out in the future. Hopefully you don't get muscle spasms, but if you do, now you know what to do, all right guys? I'm Dr. Josh Jagoda, thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys next week, bye.